Hey guys, what's up? My name is Manik Madan and welcome to another video. And in this video, we are going to discuss US only step one testing strategies on how to make sure that you prepare well for the test day because preparing well for the test day is super important and making sure that you have everything planned for the test day and everything planned day before the test day is as much as important as your preparation because if one thing goes wrong on your test day or the day before it your test could get screwed and that's what we don't want so this video is dedicated to that so the first thing you should know is the day before the test day so what do we do day before the test day the first thing i want you to do for the day before the test day is to exercise the thing that happens with a lot of people for step one is that they cannot fall asleep and if you cannot fall asleep the day before the test test day it's going to be very hard for you and it's it sucks right so what you can do for that is you can do lots of exercise in the morning for the day before the test day and just run just lift some weights or something whatever you want to do but tire yourself out make sure you're very tired so that you can get good sleep the second thing you want to do is get lots of sleep get lots of sleep the day before the test day and make sure that you at least get seven to eight hours of sleep the third thing is eat well the day before the test day because you don't want your tummy going weird on the test day and yeah do not we don't want that so eat good stuff eat your veggies eat uh home food do not order from outside because that might mess up your tummy so don't do that do not drink beer or do not drink whiskey this is gonna screw up your sleep because beer and whiskey disturb your deep sleep and your rem sleep so do not try to medicate yourself with benzodiazepines or barbiturates or do not try to drink alcohol because all of this will mess up your sleep right that's not instead of that just get some exercise i think that's a better way to go about that so now let's discuss about the test day so what you want to do is get up early make sure you get up early and set up your schedule in such a way that you reach the test center at least 30 minutes before your scheduled uh, time what you also want to do is after you get up do some stretching do some like some kind of workout that just starts your body up and makes sh and make sure that blood reaches to your brain and make sure that you get up properly and just get some amount of exercise because you're going to sit for a long amount long period of time for your step one and you want to make sure that your body is ready for that so get some stretching done and that's super important now about the breakfast what you want to do for the breakfast is you want to eat something that's very high protein that's very high fat and low carbs the reason why you want to do that is for your step your step one you want to make sure that you you, you maintain your satiety and at the same time you suppress your appetite like so that you do not get hungry for your step so the way to do that is eat something like eggs get some eggs omelet oatmeal lots of proteins have some coffee the coffee that i would advise is uh, something i call as the butter coffee you can search this up so what's the butter coffee butter coffee is actually coffee blended with butter blended with mcd oil this coffee is amazing if you want to suppress appetite and you don't want to get hungry during your step and this will this coffee also makes sure that you get a constant supply of caffeine throughout the test day it's not just it's not just that you get a you get a spike of caffeine when you have the breakfast it's like you'll have a constant supply of caffeine in your body if you drink it's amazing try that out at the same time try to avoid anything like pancakes or anything that has sugar in it because that will make your blood sugar spike and then you your energy will go down you'll have something called a sugar crash and you want to you don't want to do that the other thing to know about is what do you pack for your test the first thing we want to carry is food and good food what do i mean by good food stuff like that has lots of protein and lots of fat but not that much simple sugar you want to avoid simple sugars so what things have this is you can get protein bars that's very that's that are very high in protein and very low in sugar for this uh, the other stuff you can carry is like an omelet or eggs 
that's what I carried. At the same time, you can carry nuts, nuts like almonds, walnuts, peanuts are very high in protein and they're very appetite suppressing. So this will make sure that you are not eating too much of simple sugars and this will prevent your blood sugars from spiking and then you're and prevent you from getting a sugar crash and that's very important get some coffee with you but do not have too much of coffee because coffee will make your bladder go crazy and if you do have too much of it trust me it's not a good feeling in the exam when you're writing it and your bladder's being funny don't do that so just have some coffee not too much coffee so the other stuff that's very important you need to carry it is your scheduling permit and your ID the uh, the best form of ID I've seen is the passport and nobody rejects that but also you need to carry some other forms of ID that if even if you lose your passport you can directly enter the exam if you do not have the scheduling permit or a valid ID they would not let you in so so be careful with that one more thing that's very important to carry is medications. Get some paracetamol, get some NSAIDs. That if you get a headache from watching the computer screen for a long amount of time, you can just take, pop a pill and the headache goes away. Otherwise, that headache is going to be a big problem. When you enter the Prometric Center, they will give, they will check your, check your scheduling permit and your ID, and then they will give you a locker with a key. The, so you can keep all your stuff in that locker be like also know that you can also avail other lockers if there are availabilities and you can put other stuff in other lockers if you need to access stuff fast because the lockers are very small in a way and you need to it's like it has a lot of depth in it but it's not big it's very small so you can use multiple lockers so after you get your locker and you put your stuff there you need to check in into the test center the exact test center where you'll have a computer and all before you enter the test center there's this checking it's just like the airport checking and here they'll check you for everything they'll first take your fingerprints your thumbs and then uh, what they'll do is they'll check your pockets they'll check even your socks if you're we wearing socks they'll check any jewelry you have on on you and they will check even these glasses if you have glasses uh, they will check that for any cameras or anything this takes up a lot of time so be aware of that and you have to go through this process multiple times if you're going to take breaks. So the thing you should know is to decrease the amount of time it takes to check in and check out, you need to make sure that you wear something that has minimal pockets. So uh, the need for checking it is eliminated. Try not to wear socks because again, that will be a waste of time because they'll check your socks and uh, everything. So be careful with that. The third thing you can do is try to avoid wearing any jewelry. So that will save you up some time. So now what they'll give you is a laminated sheet. And at the same time, they'll give you a, give you a whiteboard marker. This is just for writing stuff down. I, I didn't use it that much because I was more specific that I need more time. So I tried to avoid using it. But if you have to write stuff down, you can write it there. What other thing you'll notice is once you'll go in, there's two kinds of headphones. One are wired. These wired headphones are actually the headphones that you plug into the computer and you hear the hard sounds from. And the second headphones that you have is noise cancelling headphones. And these are very tight on your head, but they're sometimes necessary. Uh, so the thing with noise cancelling headphones is they are important because when you're writing your test there's, there's a lot of people writing the GRE and the TOEFL and they'll be making a lot of noises on the computer. They'll be typing and you'll hear the typing sounds of the keyboard and that's disturbing. So that's when you can use the noise cancelling headphones. So what you can do is if you don't want to use that you can take in some earplugs with you and you can use these earplugs and they are actually softer and better than the noise cancelling headphones that they provide you and you, you're allowed to bring them in. So once you step in, you should check your headphones that if they're working or not, the wired in headphones and make sure they're working because if they are not, you're going to be in a very tough situation because you're going to be writing your test and you'll be running out of time if, you're, uh, if you've found a problem and then you'll waste time. So make sure they're working. Time management is the step one. How do you manage time? So the thing you need to know about step one is step one is about eight hours. So you, when you go and write your exam, there will be a master clock with eight hours in it. And when you start your test, that master clock will start. 
so the test will end in eight hours so if you start at 8 a.m your test should get over by 4 p.m that no matter what and this clock will keep running out of these eight hours seven hours are for blocks that is seven blocks so you get one hour per block and seven hours for seven blocks and then you have this one hour that's your break time but what do you need to know about the break time is that's divided into two things one is the 15 minutes for tutorials so out of that one hour just 15 minutes for tutorial and 45 minutes is your official break time but what you what you can do is you can skip the tutorial like you can just take one minute and just finish it off and that time will be added to your break time so from 45 minutes now you can jump to about 59 to 60 minutes for your break time and that's what I did so the thing you can do with the tutorial is you can go to just Google and just search USMLA tutorial and you can do it beforehand and that will save you up some time for your break and this is one thing you can do that can help massively because that will increase your break time the next thing to know is how do you schedule your breaks so there are seven blocks out of these seven blocks if you're going to take one break for each block it's going to be about six breaks i think everybody should take a break after each block because each block requires a lot of focus and a lot of concentration and you need to make sure that your mind just gets relaxed for even like for even five minutes because that will make sure that you kind of recharge your focus that's super important okay so the way i went about it is like after my first block i got a five minute break after my second block i got a five minute break after my third block i got like a 10 minute break after my fourth block i got a 10 minute break after my fifth block i got like a 15 minute break and after my sixth block i got a 15 minute break the, the reason i kept on increasing my break time was as the test progressed on i kept on getting more fatigued and i i, I know that will happen to you too so the way to go about that is start with small breaks in the start and keep increasing your break time because that's necessary because when you're doing your seventh block you'll get to know what i'm saying is that you will be very fatigued and to prevent that fatigue from being too much you need to have an ample amount of break time when you have your break time you can go out and when you go out so don't think like if you are going on for like a five minute break out of that two minutes are taken in just checking in and checking out so they will take your fingerprints when you check out and when you check in they will again check everything like your pockets <laughs> your jewelry your glasses everything right so make so make sure you know this that if you take a five minute break it's actually a three minute break with two minutes of check in and check out time so guys after you're done with your step you and you would like to watch more videos about usmle and medical school a subscribe to this channel would be amazing and a like would be amazing thank you